So welcome to Wednesday at the PJ Show. Uh, we're here with Bill Holowati, um, very, very senior man at Mura, Mura Inc. Been a good friend of ours for a number of years. We went to uh, Japan with Bill back yep. in 2007, which is better to say the year rather than how many. Um, and we should have a chat about all things Mura. So well, I think first thing from, for us, the, the product releases, I think it's interesting seeing those last couple of products that are launched in the, the 502s, MC502s and the KM700s kind of really seeing a, a slightly different line of things coming from you right now. Well, I think that, and th first of all, thank you. Great to see you guys again. And uh, I value our friendship and our relationship that goes back so far. We have a very serious relationship with Bill. Well, There's no laughing off camera, <laughs> it's serious. On camera, it's certainly not. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I think I'm really, really proud of, of the evolution of the design and the models mm. that, that we're releasing. Um, Mr. Mura, uh, still involved in the company, uh, opens up the factory every day at 5.30, so his influence and mentorship on his sons and, and all the Mira craftsmen are, you know, continues to be, um, you know, what guides us, you know, through a very tricky time. Uh, the KM700 specifically is uh, his design. Uh, I, I think there was a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, what happened with the Nicholas collaboration of a few right. years ago yeah. and understanding how Jack Nicholas liked the sweet spot or the center of gravity in the middle of the club face. Yeah. So that was something that evolved into the KM700, mm -hmm. uh, moving that center of gravity, which had traditionally been a little closer to the heel, to yeah. the middle of the club. Obviously a very unique uh, toe grind on mm -hmm. the club and all those things, you know, I think transition that iron into not just a good player or mm -hmm. something the better player would like, but that all golfers can enjoy. And, you know, we've always talked about Mr. Muir and the ability for his designs to make their way back to square at impact. Uh, that allows golfers to feel what a good shot feels like. Yeah. We're not interested in masking what a bad shot feels mm -hmm. like. And Mr. Muir is always, uh, uh, maintain that every golfer can play a forged club. Um, that's not to suggest that you know the MB 101 muscle back is for you, but you know this KM 700, our current model, the CB 301, yeah. you know subsequent models. You know I, I don't think you should discount them. That I'm not good enough to play them because, uh, as you guys know and are familiar with the line, uh, there's something for everybody in there. Um, the MC 502. Uh, catchphrase the modern blade mm. and the modern blade you know takes away from that muscle back design and and makes it better um, you know still being able to place um, you know the the or, or distribute the weight uh, of that soft carbon steel in in the club to optimize feel contact but being able to you know through the channels that are in the back of the club or the club head put a little bit more width on the yeah. sole of the club Optimize the camber that's in the sole of the club. Better contact. Definitely a greater progression in the in the mass moving up the back through into the jaw drives and lower in the long run. Hundred percent. No, and, and more than the five hundred one. Hundred percent. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then you know when we say the modern blade, the better player likes the look of less off, less yeah. offset, and yeah. less offset compared to its predecessor, the MC five hundred one, means that you know you're going to bring that blade player into the conversation and you're going to bring the, the, the player that might have been playing a, a mid-sized head or something with more offset, he might come down a little bit into mm. that. So um, I, I think we're really, well I don't think, I know we're really proud of both of those irons. Yeah. The, 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 the change in the industry and certainly coming through the last three or four years has meant that you know we're not necessarily introducing new models, Masters Weekend as an yeah. example. Mm. So, the MC502 came out in November. Mm. Uh, Mid-year was a KM700. So you're going to continue to see, uh, I think, moving forward, one model a year come from okay. Mira, yeah, yeah. notwithstanding wedges, but one model a year and in each player category. So right now we have the MB101, yeah. the TC201, uh, the MC502, 301, 401. So there's something for everybody, but you won't get a new model in each category every year. It'll be once every four years. And I think one of the things with Mira that's always been the case, I mean, there's no compromising on the way they do things. I think that's been, I think Mira as a brand has stayed, very much stayed in that kind of 
top echelon because there's there's not been uh, you've not been swayed by other elements of industry. You know, Neurosound has, has stuck absolutely rigidly to its principles. And, um, and, and actually, the, I think the one company that's really maintained that that um, top, top end side yeah, of things. consistency. Almost a little bit of that, mystique about it. Absolutely, and, yeah. and it's not easy, right? The the the, the temptation to jump in with the, the large OEM manufacturers, that that's hard to do, right? Like that, because you know you know you can compete with them in terms of quality, in terms of performance, but to maintain, you know, and I, and I guess it's a little bit easier because the Mura manufacturing process doesn't lend itself to mass production. Yeah. So, that, so that, you know, you, you do have to work within those parameters. Uh, Mr. Mura has a saying translated from Japanese, it, it would, it would roughly translate to the good golfer will find me. Mm. Now the good golfer, he's not referring necessarily to um, you know, the skill that's involved. He's saying if we continue to make the best products, continue to you know, have quality control that's beyond, you know, respect our manufacturing process, take pride in what we deliver, that golfers will discover who Mira is. Yeah. And you know, thankfully we have long, long established relationships around the world, like with Precision Golf, where you are intimately, you're, you have intimate knowledge with with the product, with the process, and and can speak to the consistency over the years. So we really value that in Precision, and uh, you know, hope hopefully, um, you know, moving forward, we can do a better job in the UK uh, for your customers at uh, providing more product knowledge, helping you, you know sell and communicate what's coming down the line and we're really excited about that and you know we, we, we will be consistent for years to come in that regard. And uh, not that there's, depending on what you're allowed to talk about, yeah, everyone always wants to know what's coming next, what's coming next. As, as you said it's a, a, a pretty much a one product yep. per year um, progression but is anything, anything likely to be in the offing? Um, obviously there have been I, there's no kind of set timeline for the products in the product line. Correct. They're, they're there as long as they're relevant and work. Absolutely. Um, but uh, yeah, I, 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 to be talked about I can share. Kind of a, yeah, no, we can share a little bit. I may have to kill you after okay, the interview, but enough. we can. I'm uh, going out in the high. <laughs> <laughs> um, first and foremost, um, you know, we're so lucky to have Mr. Mira's two sons in the factory, in the family, and you know, delivering these quality products. Mm. So we, the legacy of the company is strong in mm. terms of delivering this. Um, first I'd like to talk about is the CB302. It's the next generation of the 301. April of this year, uh, we should see it. Uh, when Shinye was designing the club, he said to himself, why can't golfers of all skill levels enjoy and feel like, feel what a penetrating ball flight looks yeah. like? And a penetrating ball flight obviously is something I think that uh, you know the good player wants covets. Yeah. Uh, but we all benefit if if that ball leaves on a proper trajectory, um, you know, can cut through the wind if necessary. But there is some design um, uh, strategies involved. The 302 will be a uh, variable uh, depth cavity meaning we'll have a little bit more cavity in the, in the short irons, the long irons a little less, allowing the, the design of the cavity will allow the distribution of that weight, uh, the perimeter weighting, so you know, giving more forgiveness on off-center hits. Um, I think the mirror forging process has always um, rewarded off-center hits based on its grain structure. You know, you can still get you know, a lot out of, of those shots, but now with a wider sole, the widest sole in a soft carbon forge club that we've ever been able to deliver. Uh, the seven iron is going to be 19 millimeters across. It means better turf interaction. The camber of the sole ensures that you're going to get and make good contact. Yeah. Um, you're, you're going to deliver an optimum uh, launch angle. So, you know, we're really excited about you know the potential there. The the process hasn't changed. So whether you play the blade or whether you play uh, the 302 coming out, the sound and feel of a mirror iron is going to be there. Already working on a new wedge lineup, um, 2024 is when we'll, we'll see it. Um, 
you know, right now we have the iconic K grind wedge. Yeah. We have a high bounce version of our tour wedge and, and tour wedge. What we'll see, uh, notwithstanding the, the K grind is going to be around and will be a legacy model, but we'll yeah. see one, one wedge, several grind options, same consistent look through 48 through 62. And I, I think that will allow, you know, golfers to um, match up the, the, the performance of their irons with the wedge game. We know that the wedge game is a, an extremely competitive field, um, but I, with the variety of uh, grinds that we're gonna be offered and, and bounce, I think we're gonna be something that, uh, um, you know, isn't just, I want mirror, in my, uh, mirror wedges in my bag because of the rest of them, the irons. I want mirror uh, wedges because they perform. I think you said the variety, the, the sole profile on the irons, that, that's something that I think you know, we've seen a real progression in how versatile that is, leading edge grind, the shaping, 100%. cambering at the back edge. Yep. So um, yeah, definitely adding in a variety of bounces into the wedges. I would say that would be, you know, being critical, that would have been where you has been a little bit weak over the last couple of years. So adding that in, that's I'm looking forward to getting yeah, there, and and, and, I, and then that's that's the exciting part for me. Um, Yoshitaka Mura you know, is, is doing that. Looking looking at wedges and how difficult it is in a forge club to have the CG move up and down, you know, relative to the loft that's there yeah. to create the ball flight you want. Easier done with a cast right. design, yeah. but in a in a forge design, the skill necessary to to do that and, and have them perform adequately is is tough. So it's they've been a long time in in, in the design process. Uh, prototypes are, are in you know being tested as we speak so we're excited is, is it tougher to get where you've got the thicker and thinner parts of the club to get the grain structure the tolerances through throughout that that depth change within the the, the pressed die that forging is the Abs found to use? Ab absolutely so the the they they've always used what's called wdd weight density and distribution are really important for yeah. that club head weight so you know, the, to, to be able to have, you know, to deliver the, um, the, the, to have the thickness of that club face with, with the consistency and grain structure while still putting some weight down below, yeah, yeah. not compromising, you know, up high. It is, it's extremely difficult. And the die process, making those dies uh, is, well, you guys have been to the factory, so, you know, you see what's needed not only from the first strike or the second strike, how it affects the third strike at, you know, the, it's just a real difficult process. And, and I don't say that, you know, it's, it's, it's a labor of love, mm. right? So um, that's why the Mira uh, manufacturing process doesn't lend itself to mass production. And it's why, you know, we think we can still be relevant in wedges specifically. We know irons, people know what they get. We want to get in more people's bags with the wedges that we. Will so have. The, one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen was was Murasan grinding a wedge, just the flow and the way just the, the way his hands moved it, the, the skill and the artistry in it. It just that'll that'll stay with me forever. Watching him, and I was so jealous that I didn't get that head. Yeah, I know. I wish my birthday had been that day. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, Mr. Mira still has the number one chair on the grinding line. Um, three people have sat at that chair and grinded clubs. Mirasan, obviously, mm. Isao Aoki, the very right, famous yeah. Japanese professional player, and Jack Nicholas. So okay. that's that's so a kind that, of a, that know, that pretty th not a not a notable list at all. Not a notable yeah, yeah, list yeah. at all. Yeah. So that's the number one chair, and you know that influence and that guiding life over the factory. Um, you know, you you will have seen, hopefully, uh, had the chance to look at the tours. You know, we've opened up the factory so people can see all bits and pieces of the. Mm. The, the manufacturing process, and, and we've done that to to establish that there is a Mr. Mira, there is a Mira yeah. factory. We're not seeing other companies able to do that, but you know it, we 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 should be proud of the story, the factory, and everything that we deliver out of that factory. So a little bit of an insight into Mira, what's coming, a um, bit of history, not not build being a bit of history, but a bit of history about the company. Bill's still current and present. Um, so thank you for your time. It's great to catch uh, up as always. Ab absolutely. Uh, it's the highlight. Uh, uh, you know, golf had a boom mm. that we all benefited from. Uh, and uh, the, the great part for me is to still see good friends in the uh, industry 
uh, you know, wanting to share their knowledge and, uh, you know, social media is a, a real powerful tool yeah. for us right now. So happy to come back or discuss at any time and uh, um, I'm always available, you know, to, to talk golf. So any of the new products come out, we'll get them straight on our Instagram page. We'll share the, the pretty images of the Mira Club as soon as we can and we'll have them in studio for you to test out whenever we can.